Hello, my name is Chris Powalko, and this is an introduction to optical time domain reflectometers. In this presentation, we will go over what is an optical time domain reflectometer, or OTDR, how does an OTDR work, and how to read the results of an OTDR test. An optical time domain reflectometer, or OTDR, is a tester used to characterize an optical fiber. The OTDR will provide information on such things as fiber events, such as connectors and splices, and how much loss they inhibit. It also shows the distance to the connectors, splices, and breaks. For structure cabling that follows the TIA 568 standards, OTDR testing is not required. So how does an OTDR work? An OTDR simply injects a pulse of light down the fiber under test. When the pulse of light is injected, the OTDR will set a timer. And then when the injected pulse of light encounters that event or an event in the fiber, a portion of the light will return back to the OTDR. And when that portion of the light returns back to the OTDR, it will make a note of the return time of the reflected light. And from this, it does a calculation to determine the distance to that event. From here, the information is then plotted on a graph. OTDRs depend on two types of optical quote unquote reactions to events in an optical fiber. The first one we're going to talk about is Fresnel reflections, and the second one would be Raleigh scattering. Fresnel reflections occur when light travels from one density material through another density material. This occurs in fiber optics when the light travels down a fiber traverses over the open space between the connectors and then back into the glass. In an optical fiber, a Fresnel reflection acts like a mirror, reflecting the signal back to the source. Now, Fresnel reflections occur when light travels from one media through another and back to a similar media. When the light meets the change of media, part of the light reflects back to the OTDR. In fiber optics, Fresnel reflections are located typically at your connectors, open end of the fiber, so otherwise known as the end of the fiber, breaks, and some mechanical splices will show some characteristics of Fresnel reflection. Now the next phenomena with regards to how an OTDR measures loss in a fiber is Raleigh scattering. Raleigh scattering is an optical phenomena when the light from a light source will interact with different densities in the medium. As light interacts with these different densities, the light will scatter. An example of Raleigh scattering is the way that light is on a foggy day. The light from the sun is scattered amongst the water droplets, causing only the whitish grayish light color, blocking out other colors. In an optical fiber, the light source uh, from the OTDR, for example, will interact with the impurities and or changes in density inside the fiber. Small portions of the injected light will scatter and return back to the OTDR's detector. Raleigh scattering is used by an OTDR to detect splices and bends in the fiber. The light pulse plays a significant part in the operation of an OTDR. How long the light pulse is determines the dynamic range of the OTDR. Also, the length of the pulse will determine if the OTDR can detect events that are close to each other. An example of this is a patch cord connected in a fiber optic run. When the light pulse encounters an event such as a Fresnel reflection from a connector, the reflected light back to the OTDR is pretty intense. The equivalent to this is when somebody takes a picture of you with a flash. After your eyes see the flash, you're not able to see anything until your eyes readjust. This also happens in OTDRs. This reflection will overwhelm the detector on the OTDRs, so during this period of time, the OTDR will not be able to detect any events close to the initial Fresnel reflection. The next thing we need to talk about uh, with regards to OTDRs are dead zones. The zone between when the event is first detected and when the detector can detect other events is called the dead zone. If the light pulse is long, then it will take the detector longer to recover from the reflective event. This is shown here in this slide with the long light pulse. So the top of the 
the reflection on the graph shows that there is a space up at the top that represents this dead zone. Now, if the light pulse is short, then it will take the detector a short amount of time to recover from the reflective event. And it might be able to see events closer to the original. So in this slide on the right hand side, we do show an OTDR trace of a short light pulse. So you do see the first peak and then all of a sudden it comes down into a trough and comes back up again. So this represents uh, a short pulse. This represents uh, when you use a short light pulse and it has the ability to detect events that are close together. So if short pulses are really good at seeing events close together, why don't we use short pulses only? And, or why don't we use them all the time? Well, a short pulse will be able to detect events close to each other, but the shorter the pulse, the less range the OTDR has. Short pulse OTDRs are best used in inside plant cabling where events will be closer together. For example, a fiber connection where you do go from one patch panel to another, a short pulse OTDR will be able to see those connections in that fiber link. Whereas a long pulse OTDRs, they are typically used on the outside plant for long distances. So how does an OTDR measure the loss of an event? As the light pulse continues down the fiber, the OTDR will continue to measure the reflections returning back to its detectors. When there are no events such as connectors, it will measure the Raleigh scattering or the backscatter. When an event takes place, the OTDR will measure the backscatter before and after the event to determine the amount of loss of the event. When the OTDR launches the light into a fiber, the OTDR is not able to read the backscatter prior to the OTDR's first connector connection, because in theory, the backscatter resides inside the OTDR itself. Because of this, the OTDR is not able to measure the loss of the first connector as it doesn't know where the previous backscatter level is. So in order to fix this, the solution is to connect a thing called a launch fiber. A launch fiber is a specific length of fiber connected to the OTDR and to the fiber under test. This will allow the OTDR to measure the first connector. Many OTDRs will have the ability to exclude the launch fiber from the measurement, but it is still required in order for you to measure the very first connector. When selecting the criteria for your launch fiber, things to consider are, one, the launch fiber must match the core size you are testing. So if you are testing nine micron single mode, you must use a nine micron single mode launch fiber. It must use the appropriate launch lengths for the fiber you're testing. This length is based upon the length of your launch signal. So short range OTDRs will typically use anywhere between 100 to 150 meters of fiber. Longer range outside plant OTDRs may use up to 1000 meters of fiber. And three, it must not have any damage or anomalies such as splices inside the fiber itself. It must not have any damage or anomalies such as splices inside the launch fiber itself. At the end of the fiber, when the light hits the end of the fiber, the Raleigh scattering will drop off. Because of this, the OTDR is not able to measure the loss of the final connector. The solution to this is to connect a receive fiber. The receive fiber is a specific length of fiber connected to the OTDR and to the fiber under test. This will allow the OTDR to measure the loss of the final connector. The criteria for a receive fiber is the same as a launch fiber. You must have the same core size as the fiber under test. It must be the same length as the launch fiber, and it cannot have any splices or anomalies within the launch fiber. So now we're gonna identify OTDR events. The first is a reflective event that we're gonna take a look at. Reflective events are characterized by a large spike in the OTDR graph. So the first one on the left-hand side is a reflective event, and this comes from a connector. The second one on the right-hand side actually shows a reflective event, but the OTDR detected two connectors. So this is the advantage of using a short pulse length on your OTDR. 
So this OTDR had a short pulse length and was able to detect these two connectors in this particular fiber. Non-reflective events are characterized by a dip in the backscatter. This dip indicates a loss in the backscatter strength. In an OTDR trace, splices exhibit this behavior. A ghost in an OTDR test is a non-existing reflective event caused by the light reflecting back and forth between two low performing connectors. The characteristics of a ghost is the loss value of the backscatter is the same both before and afterwards. The causes of ghosts are dirty connectors, damaged connectors, and connectors that are not properly seated. In an OTDR trace, there will be times when you connect or splice a better quality fiber to another and vice versa. In an OTDR trace, you will see this as your backscatter improving. Where this is seen is when you use a lower performing launch cable connecting to a higher performing fiber. The absolute end of the fiber, for example, after the received fiber, the backscatter will drop off substantially. At the end of the drop off, you might see some noise at the bottom. The injected light from the OTDR will be absorbed or dissipate and will not return back to the OTDR. So this is what the trace would look like at the end of the fiber.